How's it going everybody? Topher here, KVS. I wanted to show you a little tutorial today of something that I use whenever I'm creating backing tracks for our live shows. You all are probably familiar if you play live music with this website, karaoke-version.com. It's a great resource for creating your own backing tracks for playing live. Um, that's probably not what it was designed for originally, but it is a really good resource because you can multi-track mix your own backing tracks, which I find really neat. However, the, the one issue um, with this is for older songs like this one here, You're So Vain, Carly Simon, um, you can see here that the tempo is variable. It's not a constant tempo. It's around 106 BPM, um, which obviously, uh, back when the song was originally recorded, they probably didn't record it to a metronome. Um, and that's okay. There's a, there's a, a way we can get around that. Um, as you can see here, you can download a click uh, with this track. The problem with that is that this click is also variable. It was tacked on to this song after the fact. So the click goes along with the instrumental track and not the other way around. Um, but the fact that there is a click that you can download is actually going to help us out a lot. Um, and I'm going to show you using Pro Tools and Beat Detective how we can actually transform this variable tempo into a constant. So let's let's get into it. First thing we want to do is minimize this. And here I've actually already downloaded the, the things that I want to use for the backing track. This is actually a click track that I've already made that is constant at 106 BPMs. Um, and these are vocal cues that I've made that'll be on the click side of the channel um, that will go into our in-air monitors when we're playing. This is a reference track and this is the original click from the website and the actual instrumental track that I'm going to be using live. Next thing we need to do is open Pro Tools and we're going to go ahead and set our constant tempo. The way you do that is you go to Event, Tempo Operations, Constant. Go ahead and set our tempo to 106 BPM and you want to make sure that you have this preserved tempo after selection. You want to make sure you have that selected. Hit Apply. And you can see that our grid has changed now. We're at 106. So the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and fly our tracks in that we're going to be using. And you can just drag and drop those. All right, we've got our tracks in place. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start the process of uh, syncing these up with a constant tempo. Up top here is my constant tempo click that I have, and I'm kind of just using it as a visual reference. It's a little bit easier to look at than the, than the grid. Um, the first thing we want to do, we'll zoom in here a bit so we can see what we're looking at. We have the original click track from the website, and these are uh, the separated instrumental tracks from the website. The first thing we want to do is we want to take this original click track and we're going to bump the gain all the way up, max volume. You can see the wavelengths and that's just to give our beat detective something definite to latch on to. The next thing we want to do is actually bring the level of everything else way, way down to where you can barely still see the wavelength. And don't bring it all the way down to zero because when we bring this volume back up, we won't, we'll lose it. So bring everything down to where it's barely visible. Like that. And now what we're gonna do is that we're actually gonna group these four tracks together with the click track so that any edits that we make will apply to all of the tracks. It's just a, just a little bit easier to work with. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that, that this first click here is absolutely as, is as close as it can possibly get to the beginning. 
So I'll chop off that front part there and bring it all the way in. And you can see it almost lines up, but again, it's variable. So it doesn't quite line up. We're going to fix that. Next, we're going to go to Beat Detective, which is over an event down to Beat Detective. Up here, we're going to click on Bar Beat Marker Generation. And it's kind of pre-generated these, um, these markers, but um, we got to do a couple of things to make those line up. First, we need to hit Capture Selection. And next, we need to hit Analyze. And this kind of takes a second sometimes um, for it to um, get everything squared away. But as you can see now, our beat markers are on every single one of those clicks. And that's what we want. We'll zoom in here so you can see. We have a marker on the, the beginning of each one of those clicks. That's what we want. The next thing we need to do is go to Clip Separation. And then you want to go over to Separate, click that. All right, there we go. They are separated now. I'll zoom in so you can see that. You can see that all it did is it went in and it, it cut each click into its own section. All right, next we go to Clip conform. And what this is going to do is it's going to take all of these tiny little sections that we just separated and it's going to conform them to the grid. Click conform. And there you go. Now, if this worked correctly, it should be perfectly lined up with the grid. And if we zoom in and scroll, we can see that so far it looks like it worked. So, the next thing we need to do is click Edit Smoothing, and this is going to put a, um, it's going to fill in any gaps and put a crossfade between every cut. So we'll hit Smooth, and we'll zoom in here so you can see the crossfade. There you go. All right, now we can't use it like this because things are down, the click is too hot, everything else is way too low. So what we need to do, we can go out of Beat Detective now, we're done with that. We'll go to Ungroup and Clip, we'll ungroup that. So we've got our separated tracks again. However, as you can see, everything's still separated, they're just ungrouped from one another. So, let's do this, let's select the entire uh, click channel and we'll group that again. Uh, the key command for that, by the way, is Alt Command G. We'll group that. We'll group the original track channel, the cues channel, the reference channel. All right, we've got those grouped. Now we can bring those levels back down and this one back up, this one back up and this one back up. So now what we need to do is listen to the track and make sure that we're good. I'm going to take a second and listen to this. Bass intro. One, two, three, and. Acoustic guitar. One. All right, guys, we got it. Now this track is completely lined up on the grid. The tempo is constant. And we can use our, uh, we can use this for a backing track now. This channel here is just a reference track. We don't want that when we're playing live, so we'll mute that. This is our cues, which kind of keeps us all on the same page. We do want that. Um, 
This is our original click. We don't want that. This is actually the new track channel. And we do want that. And the way we run tracks is I pan the cues and the click all the way to the left. And I pan the track all the way to the right. That way, when you bounce this down as an MP3, whatever device you're running this track from, you can come out of that device with a split cable. Uh, this will be a, an eighth inch input into your computer or iPad or iPhone or whatever it is you're, you're firing this track from into quarter inch split on the other end. That way you can take your left channel click, plug that into a, a DI, your right channel track, plug that into a DI, and you can separate the two channels because you don't want your click track coming through your house mix. So let's check this out and see where we are. Bass intro. One, two, three, band. <laughs> Perfect. We got it. I will say, add a little disclaimer in here. Beat Detective is not always entirely accurate. Sometimes it'll pick up <clears throat> some minuscule transients and think that it's a, it needs to generate a, a beat marker there. So sometimes you might have to work with a, a little bit. You might have to manually go in and place some, some markers uh, in places where they're supposed to be. You might have to remove some when they or in places that they shouldn't be. But this is a quick and easy way to take a variable tempoed um, piece of music and put it on the grid, put it on a constant tempo. Um, it's a really handy tool to use, and hopefully um, this video might help you out a little bit the next time you're making backing tracks for your live shows. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.